As night falls, the city of Singapore continues to bustle with life. In the forest, nocturnal creatures begin to wake. One mammal in particular is getting ready for its day. Known locally as the toddy cat or musang in the Malay language, the common palm civet is neither a cat nor a weasel. In fact, they are more closely related to mongooses. Being shy and highly elusive, they are often challenging to spot in Singapore's wild forests and mangroves. Occasionally, however, perhaps lured by food and shelter, the inquisitive civet may explore the urban areas adjacent to its forest's home. This is the common palm civet. Yet, the common palm civet still is not the only civet species in Singapore. At the Lee Kong Chien Natural History Museum, we can sneak a peek into the past. Home to over a million specimens, the museum reveals a rich history of natural heritage in Southeast Asia. Hi, my name is Wei Ting. I'm a teaching assistant at the Department of Biological Sciences at NUS. I teach biodiversity and ecology modules there. So my research on civets was done a couple of years back for my FYP, final year project. I studied the civets at Sigla. Uh, I did the distribution of where they were at, at their area, what they eat, and also uh, took a sneak peek at the human civet conflict at the area. Singapore used to have nine different species of civets, uh, but as you know, Singapore is a very busy trading centre in the past. So many of them were passed through as pets or uh, through our trade. So they're not actually found in Singapore. Right now, we have four different species, which you see on the table. The largest one here is the large Indian civet. This was sighted in 1990s and hasn't been seen recently. This one on my right is the Malay civet. This one was seen on a camera trap in CCNR a couple of years back. If you visit the forest reserves at night, uh, you might get to see this one, which is the small tooth palm civet. And on the frontmost right-hand side is the common palm civet, which, you, uh, which is our most common civet species and can be found in urban areas. So as a whole, civet species uh, face a lot of different human impacts, mainly through development and hunting pressure. Okay, so if you look at the species uh, on the table, some of them are large in size. So the ones that are larger in size tend to be more terrestrial and they don't climb trees. These ones face more hunting pressure, whereas the common palm civet and the small tooth palm civets, they tend to be up on trees, so more arboreal in nature. Uh, they tend to need to be near vegetation and in the forest, these are often cut down due to development. Okay, the civet, uh, it's an omnivorous animal, but they eat uh, a lot more fruit, so they're frugivorous in nature. Uh, the animals that they eat uh, can range from invertebrates, so things like insects, uh, can be even snails uh, or birds and squirrels that they find in urban areas. Uh, that's a small proportion of their diet. The majority are fruits that they find in uh, urban Singapore. Uh, one common uh, fruit that they eat is the fish tail palm. Uh, the fruits are, they look very interesting. They are red when they are ripe and then the civets go for them at night. Uh, and then they defecate these little nice pulp piles uh, along pathways. And the fish tail palm seeds actually remind me very much of bubble tea pearls. Uh, so if you like to drink bubble tea and then if you encounter nice little pulp piles in parks that look like bubble tea pearls, uh, that's from fish tail palm fruits. They also eat other kinds of uh, wild plants such as your roadside plant like your rain tree. They, are also, uh, they also like sweet fruits, they have a sweet tooth. They like to go for mangoes, rambutans, uh, fruits that we commonly plant in our urban gardens. Because of their fruit eating nature, they are actually very important seed dispersal. So they help to disperse the seeds of the plants that they eat quite a far distance away because they are really very mobile. Uh, and this is very important in urban Singapore because there are not a lot of, uh, or they're much lesser uh, fruit eaters or, or fruit dispersals in our midst. So they are like a little gardener that we have in urban Singapore and that's very important. Uh, so because of that, we also uh, would like to encourage people if they want to see these kind of native wildlife, not only the civets, any other native wildlife around, uh, they can plant up more trees and then that will also attract these animals that like fruits uh, and flowers to come to their garden. 
uh, and also help to disperse these seeds to other areas. Okay, what I'd like to say for civets is that uh, they are a really rare treat to have around in our urban uh, city. Uh, not everyone gets to see a civet uh, running around in their estate or in their neighbourhood, uh, so we should really treasure their presence. Uh, and if you like to see these animals around, you can plant up your garden or the green spaces around your neighbourhood. Uh, and they are really very shy, they won't really come up to you uh, and they won't really disturb you. They will just go about their business at night, uh, eat some fruits and then go back to the trees to sleep. Yeah, so I hope that people can uh, understand them a little bit more and be able to co-live with them in our city in nature. From nine to only four remaining civet species in Singapore's forests, this urban jungle seeks to conserve its natural heritage and coexist with nature. We need to treasure and conserve our remaining biodiversity to truly become a city in nature. <laughs>